welcome to the next lecture in single phase induction motor we have started our lecture series on single phase induction motor and we covered in the first lecture this is the second lecture where we are focusing on the principle of operation of single phase induction motors the two important theories which are basically used for explaining the operating principle of single phase induction motors are the double revolving free theory and the cross free theory so these two important theories generally used for explaining the principle of operation of single phase induction motors out of these two theories the double revolving theory is simplified explanation used to understand the operation of single phase induction motors so we generally use double revolving theory and this will be discussed here as a part of principle of operation of single phase induction motors so let us check the double revolving field theory the field produced in a single phase induction motor can be explained by the double revolving field theory this theory is based on the ferraris principle asserting that the pulsating field produced can be dissolved into two components of half the magnitude and rotating in opposite direction at the same synchronous speed so when we talk about the magnetic field these are pulsating in nature and it is basically dissolved into two components which are of equal magnitude so half the magnitude it will be equal and it will be rotating in opposite direction at the same synchronous speed ns so this principle is the double revolving field theory and it is based on the ferraris principle the alternating flux across the air gap and stand still consists of a combination of two fields of the same strength but revolving at the same speed so this is what we are discussing here on the same flux condition that the flux which is basically produced and where the flux is produced it is produced in the air gap between the stator and the rotor and these two fields are of same strength so what we just now say uh, see that it is of half the magnitude of the total magnetic field and it will be revolving in the same speed which is the basically the synchronous speed so the two field out of which one will be rotating in the clockwise direction and the other will be rotating in the anti clockwise direction the strength of each of this field is equal to one half of the maximum field strength of the actual alternating field so this is again the repeating sentence but we have to re remember the two important thing is that the double field which is produced so one is in clockwise direction another is in anti clockwise just anti clockwise direction and each are of same magnitude or one half of the maximum field strength and they are rotating in the two important the speed that is the synchronous speed into important opposite direction so let us consider that the maximum flux phi m is the pulsating field which has the component and the half the magnitude phi m by 2 is moving in the opposite direction so these components are rotating at the same angular speed so the synchronous speed or the angular speed are same and the resultant of the two field is phi m cos theta so let us see here now we have the x direction and the y direction and if at a certain point the maximum flux is phi m so it is moving in two direction which are opposite to each other so when the field is opposite so it will cancel out in this direction but the resultant field will be phi m cos theta which will be in this direction the resultant field varies according to the cosine of the angle theta where theta is nothing but the omega t so theta depends upon the phase displacement of the magnetic field and it will be depending upon the synchronous speed omega as well as the time t so here we can see the wave diagram where from 0 degree to 360 degree how the field is changing its position and it is moving so you can see that the magnitude is maximum at 0 degree and again it is maximum at in the negative direction at 180 and it will be zero at 90 degree and 270 
So at any instant t, the two flux have been rotating through an angle theta which is equal to omega t and along the x-axis if we see the two half phi m by 2 on cos omega t and another half phi m by 2 cos omega t these two will add up and then we will be giving phi m cos theta or phi m cos omega t and along the y-axis if we see uh, one component will be positive and another component will be negative which will be sine omega t component which will cancel it out and the net resultant field in the y direction will be zero and hence we can say that the resultant flux is nothing but the phi m cos omega t when we talk about the x direction and the y direction so y axis there is no resultant field but only the resultant field is only in the x direction thus an alternating field can be represented by the two fields each half of the magnitude rotating at the same synchronous speed omega s which is the unit for radian per second but in opposite direction so we will be taking the resultant field as phi m cos omega t and this field will be again dissolved into two important components at any point which are rotating at the synchronous speed if we talk about the resultant air gap mmh whose axis is fixed in space then we have the cos theta as well as cos omega t component which are two important axis so it is uh, twice the co cosine component and you have the maximum uh, magnitude of one half is half f f max whereas another is half f max which are both equal and these are the maximum value of the flux so the first half will be representation of the forward mmf and the second is the representation of the back mmf where omega is the frequency of the stator current so the supply whatever we are giving on the stator the frequency of the supply is omega and the space displacement angle from the stator winding axis is theta and positive direction is the direction which we have taken in the direction which the motor is initially started so we can initially start the motor in the clockwise direction or we can start in the anti-clockwise direction so that will be taken as positive in which direction this motor is started so it will have the forward mmf as well as the backward mmf and together it will give you the resultant air gap mmf this forward mmf and backward mmf will be important when we will discuss the equivalent circuit of the single phase induction motors where how this forward mmf is represented in electric circuit and the backward mmf is represented in electric circuit that we are going to see in the coming lectures so the two major conclusion of double revolving free theory is a stationary pulsating magnetic field can generate two equal magnitude rotating magnetic field so this is the first important conclusion second the field we always move at the synchronous speed in the opposite direction matching the frequency of the stationary magnetic field alteration so we will have two field which will rotate in opposite direction and both its magnitude will be equal and the resultant field will be phi m cos theta so based on this principle the single phase induction motor will govern and the cross field theory is difficult to understand and represent yeah if for the day-to-day -day life uh, basic understanding so we don't take cross field theory we generally explain the single phase induction motor in terms of double revolving field theory in the coming lecture we will see how this principle will be used to represent the single phase induction motor in terms of equivalent circuit and how we can solve the problems in single phase induction motor thank you for now